Hello everyone, this is Aoi, and welcome back to Token Ranbu, the swords behind the sword boys. For today's episode, we'll take a look at the third member of the Tenkagoken, and the first of the Aoi swords, Juzumaru Tsunetsugu. Juzumaru's name literally means rosary sword, while Tsunetsugu is a reference to his swordsmith. Most of his personality comes from the blade's history of being associated with Buddhism, while the rosary beads in the shape of an infinity symbol and the lotus on his crest continue the motif. Juzumaru was thought to have been forged by Tsunetsugu of the Aoi school, which would place his forge date somewhere in the early 1200s. However, the only clue we have as to who forged it is the signature, Tsunetsugu, on the blade itself. The Aoi school swords typically have the signature facing the body while the sword is being worn, yet the one on Juzumaru is on the opposite side, leading some to speculate that he is potentially not an Aoi sword at all. So, who else could have made him? Well, as it turns out, another school, the Bizen school, also had a Tsunetsugu forging sword system about 30 years earlier, around 1184 to 1185. Token Ranbu places him in the Aoi school, but it's interesting to note that we don't really know who his swordsmith was, and our only clue is a signature mark made nearly a thousand years ago. But regardless of which Tsunetsugu forged the blade, Juzumaru's story and personality really starts with another man, Nichiren, a priest who created his own branch of Buddhism. Nichiren was born Zenichimaro in the year 1222, and throughout his life was exiled twice for his ideals, though the second was said to have been an alternative measure as divine intervention in the form of a brightly glowing orb stopped what would have otherwise been his execution. He was pardoned for the last time in 1274, likely due to the influence of some of his followers in the government, but when the government wouldn't listen to his advice, he made his way to Mount Minobu and met with a man named Lord Haki Sanenaga. Sanenaga allowed Dichiren to build a hermitage there, because it was an area where he still had a lot of loyal followers, and at some point, he was also the one who gave Juzumaru to him. While it was intended as a means of protection due to the often harsh climate on the mountain, Nichiren instead deemed it a symbol of destroying of iniquity and establishing righteousness. He hung a rosary over its hilt, thus giving the sword its name. Ichiren died in 1282, and the sword remained at the hermitage, by now the Kuanji Temple. However, when a list of famous artifacts in the Kyoto region was compiled in the 1700s, the sword was no longer at the temple. While its whereabouts in the meantime are still unknown, it was rediscovered in 1920 as part of a list of auction items from the collection of an aristocrat. A man named Sugihara Shozo decided to buy it, fearing that if it was won by someone outside the country, it might never find its way back to Japan again. He publicized the identity of the sword in national newspapers, and one year later, in 1921, it was designated as a national treasure. While attempts were made to give the sword back to the Kuanji Temple, they were unable to raise enough money to buy it, and instead it was given to the Honkoji Temple, which was near Sugihara's hometown. Today the sword is still at the Honkoji Temple and is considered an important cultural property. It goes on public display once a year on November 3rd. And now, let's get to some trivia. Juzumaru's eyes are always closed as if in prayer, and until now there hasn't been any official artwork of him with them open. He has a very enigmatic and calm personality, which makes it hard to tell what he's thinking. There are rosary beads hanging from his battle outfit, likely a reference to the fact that his hilt was draped with them in real life. And that's the story of Juzumaru. As always, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all back here with the next- Sorry, a few technical difficulties there. As I was saying, I'll see you back here with the next sword, Nikari Aoi, soon.